The first thing we need to do in this example is write the null and alternative hypothesis. Recall that the researcher wanted to know if the, the reading fluency for first grade students in his school was different from the national average. According to that research question, we would write the null hypothesis as the mean mu equal to 53 which was the population mean given in the problem. And we write the alternative hypothesis to be consistent with the researcher's questions. And this was that, that the, the, the fluency for students in a school was different from the national average. So we would say that the, mu, the mean mu does not equal 53. It's a two-sided alternative hypothesis. We would reject the null hypothesis if we end up with a value that's really low, or we would reject it if we end up with a value that's really high. Now that we have the null and alternative hypothesis, we should state the significance level, and we're going to use the conventional alpha equals 0.05. And to do our test, we need a Z critical value since we're going to do a Z test. And when we come up with our Z critical value, what we're looking for is if we go to a standard normal distribution, we want to find we're interested in values that are consistent with the alternative, and those are going to be ones that are really extreme. And so since we have an alpha level of 0 0.05, we, not, we need to find the value from our normal distribution, our standard normal distribution, where the area and both tails together is 0 0.05. So we want to have 2.5% in the upper tail and 2.5% in the lower tail. And if we use a table, um, like in the back of a statistics book, we know that the critical value we're interested in is going to be 1.96 on the upper end, and of course, negative 1.96 on the lower end. So if our value of the Z test statistic is greater than 1.96 or less than negative 1.96, we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. If we go back to the problem, um, normally we would have sample data and we would start by computing the mean, but that's already been done for us and we know that the sample mean is going to be 58. The problem also gives us the population standard deviation and that's something that we have to have in order to use the one sample z test. And so we know that the population standard deviation sigma is equal to 12. We also know that the sample mean of 58 was based on 25 participants. And that gives us all the information we need to compute the z-test. So the z-test is going to be our sample mean minus the population mean under the null. And that's divided by the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And if we plug in our numbers, we get 58 minus 53 and that's going to be divided by 12 divided by the square root of 25. If we continue working the problem that's going to give us 5 divided by 2.4 which is going to equal 2.08 and we see that the value of our z-test, our z-statistic, is 2.08, and that's greater than our z-critical value of 1.96. And therefore, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. And so the researcher can conclude that students in his school do indeed have a different reading fluency than the national population.